In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Lightroom's tone curve and why you might want to use it in your photographs. And then I'm also going to talk about why you might not need to or may not want to in your photographs. So stick around. So the Tone Curve panel in Lightroom basically lets you control the contrast in your image. Um, the highlights, shadows, and things like that. And while you do have those controls in the actual um, basic panel, and also in all your local adjustments, there's a more um, in-depth way to control it inside the um, Tone Curve panel. So I'm going to take it to the computer and I'm going to show it to you. And um, for my photography and Eric's photography, uh, I know we really don't use it too much. Um, I'm going to talk about you know how you can use it, why you might want to use it, and why in our workflow a lot of times we're able to get the look we want inside the basic panel or using local adjustments um, with some of the other tools like the adjustment brush and the graduated filter and the radio filter. Okay, so let's go into the computer here and um, we'll talk about the tone curve. So I'm here in Lightroom's develop module and I'm going to be talking about the tone curve in this tutorial. Um, even though it's not a part of Lightroom that I typically use too often, um, you should know how to use it and it's in here. And for our type of photography, it just it seems like we're able to get the images where we need them without using this. But with that said, I still think you should know how to use it and know all the tools that are in it. So here's the tone curve. You see it on the right side here and it's broken up into four regions and as I hover my cursor over each section of it inside the window here you can see a different slider is highlighted and those are indicated by these little points down at the bottom so if I take the shadow sl slider and move it you'll see the curve move in that section same thing with the darks and you can see how it's affecting the image Okay, so each one affects a different portion, and um, you can also grab the line and do the exact same thing. Okay, so when I move to each section of it, now I'm affecting the darks, and so on. Now we're going into the lights, and then the very top is the highlights. If you double click on a slider in Lightroom you can zero it out. So I'm going to zero these out. Now another thing about this um, panel is you can adjust the size of each one of these sections. So right now it's basically broken up into four equal parts. But let's say I wanted to work in the highlights in this image and now this image has a lot of uh, blown out areas or almost blown out areas. So I want to work in this section but I want to make it bigger. I can grab this and make it bigger on the bottom I'm gonna affect more pixels in that zone so now if I grab this and pull it down you can see it's affecting the highlights and more of them and if I want to I can grab this and move it and it's going to adjust it and you can see in the image it's changing as I do that because less of the pixels affected by the highlights are being used so this is a way to really make fine adjustments inside here. So, and you can see what's happening here. I'm moving the one that affects the lights. I'm making that section smaller. So now I brighten the image up and I want to make it smaller. I want to make it larger. It's going to make it brighter. So you can adjust these any way you want. When you double click on these, they, they zero back out to the starting point also. That's one way to use the tone curve. So on, a, on an image like this, typically, I would lower the highlights here. I'd raise up the shadows a little bit. And I'd add some contrast. With the dark slider a little too much maybe take down the lights a little bit and that's affecting the image all over now there's another way to do this inside of this panel without using the sliders 
directly. And it's called a targeted adjustment. So if I look right here, there's this little icon in the top left corner of the panel. And if I click on it, it activates it. Now when I come over here into the image, wherever I put my cursor, that is what's going to be affected by the tone curve. And as you see, as I move it around the image, you can see what part of the tone curve is being affected. So as I go into the highlights and bright areas, it's up in the highlights and lights area. If I go somewhere dark in the image, it moves down to the bottom. So if I just hover right here in the highlights, right, uh, left click on my mouse and then pull down with it, you can see it's just pulling down the highlights. If I come over here to this tree in a darker area and I raise it up, it's going to add to the shadows. If I go the other way with my mouse and pull it down, it's going to darken the image. So you can take this tool into any part of your image and you can affect the tone curve just by moving the targeted adjustment tool around inside the image. And when you come back over here and deselect it, now you have all the adjustments that you've made there. For me, personally, I feel like this is almost too much um, control. I don't need this much control in most of my images. Um, but it's here and you should know how to use it. The last part of the tone curve is this section down here. It's called the point curve. And in here you have three presets built in. So one is linear, which is the tone curve line is straight. The next one adds a medium amount of contrast and then strong contrast. Okay. Now, these are like presets, so if you quickly know you just want to add a little bit of contrast, you can t click one of these. And then the last thing in the Tone Curve panel is the Point Curve. Now, this changes the way the Tone Curve window looks. The anchor points at the bottom are gone, and now what you're going to be able to do is put anchor points on the Tone Curve line. So, if I click and put one in the middle, and then I click and put another one here, and another one here, I can grab this middle line and I can move it and affect the image in different ways. And you can see as you move it around, the whole line kind of adjusts and moves. So I can add another point here if I wanted to bring this up or if I wanted to work in the darks of the image. So you can you have a lot of control in here, but you can also, as you can see, the image doesn't look very good. So this is one of the reasons I don't use this. The few times I've tried to use it, I end up not being happy with the way I like it, and, and I, I end up zeroing out and starting over. So let's uh, put this on linear again, zero it out. And the last thing is the RGB. So I can grab a color and just affect the color on the in the image. So if we pull this up, it gives it like a like a split toning effect almost. So if you wanted to affect a certain color in your image, you could do that with this. Give it like a split toning type of look. Again, if I wanted to do this, I'd probably go into the split toning panel for that, which will be another tutorial. Let's zero this back out. Okay, so here I am back at the original image, and instead of using the Tone Curve window, which you now know how to use, I'm going to open the Basic panel and show you how I would actually in, um, edit this. So the first thing I would do is I'd come in and I'd bring down the highlights a little bit. I'd open up the shadows a little bit, get some brightness in there. Add some there. I'd add a little contrast to the image maybe too much and there's actually a contrast slider in here if I wanted to add contrast so for my purposes with an image like this this would be how I would work with the tones and the contrast in the image rather than going into the tone curve panel and then from here I would take my adjustment brush where I have all of the same adjustments and I might if I think the highlights are still a little too much in one spot, I could make a more of a local adjustment. 
And if I wanted to add, if I click new, what that's going to do is uh, give me a new adjustment. My old adjustment I just made is still there. I'm going to zero these out by clicking the effect button. And let's say I want to add a little clarity to the castle only. I can do that. And now I'm done. So if I click the Y key, it'll show me a before and after. So it's not a huge difference, but this is the way I work with tones inside of Lightroom. So that's the tone curve in Lightroom. Uh, we don't use it all the time. You can see how the panel actually lets you get a little more detail and make some more fine adjustments uh, to the contrast in your image. So um, it's up to you. If you find that this really helps you in your photography, use it. If not, you know, and you can quickly do what you need to do in the basic panel or some other way. Um, that's what's great about these programs. There's no right or wrong way to do anything, and there's usually more than one way to do the same thing. So um, that's it for the Tone Curve panel in Lightroom. Um, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. And if you like what we're doing, click like. And if you want more of these type of videos, subscribe to the page. Thanks. Thank you.